Hi, Stephen Smith here, and I believe that I have a word from the Lord for you today. You know, throughout the past couple of weeks, God has blessed us with the opportunity to be able to hear what it is that he's saying in his word. And it's not by my own power, but it's by the Spirit of God in us that enables us to be able to understand these things. And we're simply reading his words and believing in the confident expectation of what he has in store for us. Today, God gave me Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Look at what it says. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this, for it is a gift from God. Sin is not a reward for the good things that we've done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he has planned for each of us. This passage is really powerful for us because it helps us to understand a few things. The first is that God saved us by the power of his grace and that there's not anything that we could have done except believed in this. Now, the salvation is the word sozo, so it also means that he healed us, that he made us whole, that he's made us prosperous. All these things are available to us because of what God has freely done for us, and we can't earn them at all. You know, he even goes on and explains this where he says that salvation is not a reward for the good things that we've done. It's, it's just so that God did it because he loved us. You know, verse 10 goes on and tells us that we're a masterpiece created in Christ Jesus. That's powerful because words mean something here. If we look closely, we see that not only is Christ in us, but this passage that Paul is telling us about is that God created us to be in Christ Jesus. Now that's powerful because if we're in Christ Jesus then everything that Christ is, we are as well. So that changes the way that we are and it changes who we are as we go and we live our lives for God himself. You know, earlier on in this chapter, Paul addresses this in the sixth verse. He says, For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. The NLT uses the word united here, but the word in is actually a part of most of the translations that you'll come across there. So again, it's about us being in Christ and not just about Christ in us. That makes us united. That pulls us all together, and that's the thought that the NLT is trying to convey to us here. This is really important for us as we live our lives, because now I can live in the same victory that Christ had when he lived here. Don't you think that that's powerful? Look at Hebrews 6, 18. This is the power of what God has done for us. He's done two different things for us. In this verse, it tells us that God has given us both his promise and his oath. And by these two things, they are unchangeable because it's impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold on to the hope that lies before us. That hope, just as we said yesterday and the day before, is the hope in our salvation. So if I have a confident expectation in the hope that God has for me, then I know that I can be successful in everything that I set my hand to. Because my salvation is set before me, I haven't done anything to earn it, it's absolutely mine, I can claim it right away, and I can live in the victory of that salvation now. How powerful is that? You know, Jesus Christ himself said this in Mark 16, 16. He says, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. You know, that word saved is sozos. So it's, if I believe, then I know that I can be healed. If I believe, then I know that I can be prosperous. If I believe, then I know that I can be made whole. The second part of this verse tells us, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. You're not condemned because you don't know. You're not condemned because God wants to punish you. You're condemned because you refuse to believe. Are you refusing to believe all of God's promises? Well, that's where our, our hangups are. So let's take our confidence in what God has provided for us and believe what he has said to us. So here's the word of the Lord that I believe that he's given to me today. Just as I have freed you from your sins by your belief and by the power of my promises and the oath that I have given, I will also make you whole. Because you are now united in Christ, you are as whole as he is. For there is no sin in Christ, there is no sickness in Christ, and there's no poverty in Christ. Let's take these promises and live the full life that God wants us to be able to live. You know, this has been a real blessing for me to be able to share this with you. Why don't you get the same blessing by sharing it with others? You can share this on Facebook. You can go to YouTube and see all the different um, posts that we have there. And you can even paste those, those into your Facebook page and, 
and enable others to be able to see it as well. You're more than welcome to do anything you need to or want to with these. You can also go to our blog or to our webpage at awfg.today. If you go there, you'll see all of our videos. You'll see the blog posts where we actually have a transcript of everything that was discussed here today and for the last um, about two weeks or so. So why don't you join us today and continue to worship the Lord by living in the victory that he's given you today.